What's up, YouTube? How you guys been, man? It's been a long time I haven't seen you guys. For our first day subscribers, you guys know I'm Officer Mogado with the City of Miami Aviation Detail. For our new timers, or our first timers, uh, welcome uh, to the Miami Police Vlog. So uh, come with me and I'll talk to you guys on the way to the airport and uh, give you guys some updates from our last uh, vlogs that we've made so that we can go ahead and uh, pre-flight our helicopter and ultimately give you guys the nighttime vlog that I've promised you guys back season one probably episode 15 13 something like that also I want to go ahead and try a new thing um, which is what I call the helmet cam so that you can go ahead and see what is it that I myself uh, my point of view of myself during our operations here uh, with the helicopter so for those of you or just tuning in our new helicopter is a Amer uh, Airbus helicopter AS350 B2 um, which we per we picked up delivered in December of 2016 just to update you guys on on myself you know something happened that doesn't happen uh, until every two years typically here in the department where there was an announcement placed for promotional exams for anyone that's an officer who wishes to become promoted for a sergeant is allowed to, uh, to once again apply if they qualify and they have to do two series uh, tests which is one is a written uh, multiple choice test and the other one is uh, what's what, what is called an assessment center long story short uh, you know I went ahead and put in for it and fortunately myself uh, I placed uh, uh, pretty high on the list and, and get promoted sometime soon so um, That'll be a nice thing. Hopefully Nick can do a, a vlog on that so you guys get to see that process. It's pretty neat. So, uh, you know, as of right now, going ahead and entering Opalaka Airport, uh, where we're currently parked, which is the uh, at the U.S. Coast Guard hangar. And we'll be going ahead. First order of the day is always to pre-flight the aircraft, making sure that the aircraft is pre-flight and uh, safe and uh, ready to go for our missions, whether it be patrol or whether it be uh, respond missions uh, to where patrol units or any specialized units need to. So we're on the way to the aircraft and uh, see you guys when we get there. All right guys, as I was saying on the on the drive-in, went ahead and seen uh, Opalaka Airport. Once again, this is where we operate out of. Very big and an antique field. Airfield used to be military base back uh, in the era of World War II, maybe beyond that. So the first thing to do, once we come here, the first order of business, as they say, is to go ahead and come open up the aircraft. And I'll go ahead and put the, the camera on a, a little tripod there. But we go ahead and uh, open up the aircraft, everything that, that needs to be open so that we can go ahead and do our um, our proper uh, pre-flight checks because due to uh, how things sometimes thermally expand and contract you know uh, properties and especially in, in metals and and any uh, metallic objects they go ahead and change and something that you didn't see the night before when the aircraft was hot and running is might be here now when we get here in the morning uh, it cooled down you might start seeing uh, any cracks or anything like that develop. Uh, so that's why it's always in aviation. You always do your pre, your in-betweens, and your post-flight uh, inspections. Always, always, as well as everything that is required um, for the maintenance manual. So once again, here she is, and I'm gonna go ahead and mount the camera on a, a tripod, and I'm going ahead and start the, uh, the inspection. All right, enjoy.
ladies and gentlemen, went ahead, finished the mechanical part or the mechanic aspect, ensuring that the pre-flight gets done uh, safely, successfully, make sure that there's no uh, discrepancies which are gonna prevent us from flying. And if so, if there is a, if there is a discrepancy, whether it be minor, uh, that I can probably fix it here in the field or whether it be major where we have to go ahead and call in the contractor, uh, Rotor Tech Services, or take it up to West Palm Beach uh, to get that addressed. So uh, with further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you guys to, uh, for the day one subs and for the newcomers, uh, the sergeant, the pilot uh, of the unit, and of the detail. That way you get to know uh, Sergeant Baroto. I'm here, Sarge. Guys, Sergeant Baroto, a pilot of the unit. Okay, and uh, Sarge, what's more or less the, um, the different aspects from day and night from our job? Um, you know, typically we're on a schedule where we have some daylight, mostly nighttime. What is the different aspects? Uh, according to that, what is the different aspects when it comes to day and night, especially on uh, airborne law enforcement? Sure, of course. Just to explain to the folks is uh, basically this. The helicopter is equipped with several versions of sensor equipment such as our FLIR forward-looking infrared camera and our FX-16 night sun spotlight. Sorry, do you mind pointing that out real quick? Even though they can go back to the other video, sure, sure. Uh, the 120, which is all the same equipment, but Sarge is gonna go ahead and point that out. At this time, this is what the Spectral Lab SX-16 night sun looks like. It's a 35 million candle power searchlight that uh, is very powerful and has a range of approximately one to one, one and a half miles. So one to one and a half miles that one has? Correct. All right. And what's the other capability that uh, we're employed with here? The second item that we have, and the name's a little um, faded, it's the FLIR Forward Looking Infrared Corporation FLIR 8500 camera ball that's installed in, on the helicopter. It has a FLIR camera, a color camera, and a little light television camera that we use to try to surveil these offenders. More or less, how does that work? Is that a night vision or is that something else? Well, it's it's not night vision like people normally think, like a like a light augmentation system. No, this is basically instead of looking at a at a visible light wavelength, it's looking at a heat wavelength, which is invisible to the eye. However, in total darkness, the camera can see heat just like we can see light during the day. All right. Same concept. Awesome, and hopefully. Uh, Sarge, what do you think? Hopefully tonight we can try to pick something up and uh, show you guys the use of it. Um, so once again, uh, Sarge and I, we went ahead, birds all pre-flighted. Uh, we go ahead and we take up our now patrol mission uh, regarding the unit. Yes. You know, whether it be proactively patrolling or reactively responding to calls. Um, of course, we're doing some admin stuff uh, in between and, uh, and any maintenance items that come up. So without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can get into and uh, see what we can find to go ahead and show you guys. All right, see you in a bit.
So all right, ladies and gentlemen, we went ahead. We completed our flight for today, our uh, our 10 hour shift. Uh, the bird, as you can see, she's back in the hangar. Uh, we just went ahead and completed her uh, post-flight inspection of the day. Um, today, so far at nighttime, um, in the night portion, uh, what we you got to see was that uh, went ahead and responded. There was a, uh, a, a a 30, a possible 30, which is a uh, shots fired call. Um, at which point, I, we went ahead and located uh, two individuals that came out of a, you know, a, an area where it's not normal for law-abiding citizens at that time to be walking. Uh, and also at one point went, at which point when I went ahead and put the spotlight on them They kind of appeared as if they wanted to run and flee uh, For no reason uh, So at that point we went ahead and directed the units to those individuals so that they can go ahead and identify them uh, due to that You know suspicious action of when they see the helicopter and the spotlight in an area where we just got a possible shooting And they want to go ahead and take flight and run, you know, that's Comes a little bit suspicious at that point especially when there's typically nobody at that time of night walking there but the units went ahead they stopped them they checked them out um, via records and it appears that they were uh, okay uh, nothing uh, involved with that possible shooting and then also what you're able to see is uh, at, uh, at one point and we got to work the FLIR a little bit um, which is the forward-looking and for M. once again that works off of thermal imaging um, at that point, what you got to see was there was a traffic stop where a unit requested other units to respond, um, of reference, whatever it is that he was investigating. And hopefully you'll see, you know, you get to see clearly that on the camera at the screen, which is right in front of me, where I get to see the FLIR, you know, what is it that I'm doing? Uh, you'll get to see, um, how the, the different colors, uh, it goes from a color camera to a thermal image, which is typically a contrast between two colors, in this case, black and white. Some FLIRs is blue and red. And at that point, you can see where I can identify um, the units and also the subject in, in question. And the vehicles themselves, you know, everybody's emitting heat. There's nothing we can, there's no way we can mask that. Um, and that imagery camera, that forward-looking infrared, is the, uh, the tool that allows us to see that heat that we all admit. Uh, there's no getting away from that so um it's a good flight uh, a little proactive patrol as we try to do the best uh, uh those are the different tools that we have during night that we can go ahead and employ uh like i said earlier that you know that clear it's uh can be used during the day as well it's a very good asset very important tool where uh, we can utilize and you know it makes our job a little easier as well as the the units down on the ground who really need us the most so um as always guys, you know, uh, to our day one subs, glad you, uh, to have you guys back and back with the aircraft and going for a flight for the newcomers. Welcome to the Miami Police Vlog. It's for me the best vlog out there, uh, being a little biased, but um, it's awesome to be a guest vlogger. You know, it's uh, something we don't take lightly and I uh, can't wait to have you guys back. With that being said, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and leave your comments down below. I myself, uh, when you leave your comments down below, I go ahead and try to answer as much questions as I can so that you can get a, an answer provided directly from the uh, aviation detail. So uh, have a good night and catch you guys later.